My name is Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. Now Qualcomm as well as announcing the Snapdragon 865, as well as announcing their new X55 modem, they've also announced the Snapdragon 765 and the 765G. So if you want to find out about those, please let me explain. <laughs> Now Qualcomm sell their devices in different tiers. So you have the 200, the 400, the 600, the 700 and the 800 and the 865 is the top of the top tier. But there are other processors that are aimed at different markets. So the mainstream market or the premium mainstream market that are just below flagships. They're not your cheap, you know, $99 devices. They're still a couple of hundred dollars, three, four hundred dollars even sometimes, but they are actually offer reasonable performance and some good features, but not quite the same as what you get in the flagship. Now the Snapdragon 765 is basically an upgrade to the Snapdragon 730. Now some people were thinking this would be called the 735, but to try and align, I suppose, the top of the 700 series with the top of the 800 series, you've now got the 865 and the 765. And so basically the 765 is a 730 with a few tweaks in it. So when it comes to the CPU, you have here the Cryo 475, which is very similar to the setup that we had in the Snapdragon 730. So you've got two uh, big cores, heavy lifting performance cores, and then six more power efficient cores. So you've got two Cortis A76 cores, and then six Cortis A55 cores. Now, of course, in the 865, it's Cortis A77. So here we're talking A76, one generation before, but borrowing a bit from the rule book of the 865, one of those cores, actually runs slightly faster than the other. So the first prime core runs at 2.3 gigahertz. The second prime core, Cortex-A76, runs at 2.2 gigahertz. And then you have the six Cortex-A55 cores running at 1.8 gigahertz. And the story is basically the same with the Adreno. Here we have the Adreno 620. We have the 618 in the 730. This is the 620, slightly tweaked. Seven uh, nanometers now rather than eight nanometers. Slightly better performance, but nothing too big but it's better than the 730, an upgrade to the 730. But the really interesting thing about the 765 is that it includes integrated the Snapdragon X52 5G modem. That means that every uh, Snapdragon 765 device will be a 5G device. Now there are some limitations to the uh, X52. It's not as good as the X55 that you find paired with the Snapdragon 865. It does support millimeter wave, it does support sub six, it does support standalone, non-standard, it does support dynamic spectrum sharing. However, the maximum download speed is 3.7 gigabits per second. So about half of what you'll get from the X55 in the uh, Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon 865. Now, one of the videos I want to do next week is to compare all of these different 5G modems internal and external from Samsung, from MediaTek, from Huawei, from uh, Qualcomm to see who offers the best 5G technology going into next year for both flagship and for the premium mainstream segments. So do stick around on this channel where, for that video which I'm going to release I hope next week. Now there is also the Snapdragon 765G and the G there standing for gaming. Now there are two basically big differences here. One is there are some features in terms of the Snapdragon Elite Gaming, which is basically some software stuff, some APIs that allow you to maybe bring better fidelity to the screen. Those are available, of course, in the Snapdragon 865, but they're also available in the 765G, some of them. Not all of them, there's a subset of them. So those are available for uh, people who want to make gaming phones for the premium mainstream uh, area. But the big difference is, is that the GPU in the 765G is 20% faster than in the standard 765. And the way they're doing that is basically, it's a bit crude, but they basically get the chip off the production line, they plug it in, they see what frequencies it can run at, can this run at a higher frequency and it's stable? Yes it can, good, it's a 765G, oh no it can't, didn't quite get manufactured at the same tolerances and we're talking you know nanometer tolerances here so we'll call that the 765 this one yes yeah, so it's called binning it's called speed binning all companies do it it's a whole thing maybe i'll make a video about it one day but basically the high quality chips that come off the line they get called g they run faster run at a faster clock speed speed the ones that aren't got the g are the ones that didn't make the cut but they're still working they're perfectly good they just can't run quite at that 
overclocked speed. So the uh, eight, uh, 765G gaming mode one, software, and also 20% better GPU performance because they've actually worked out it does actually run at that higher speed without becoming unstable. Okay, so there you have it, the 765 and 765G premium mainstream devices, Cortis A76, two of them, Cortis A55, six of them, Adreno 620, the 20% speed increase on the G version, integrated 5G modem with millimeter wave and with uh, sub six and all the other features that you need aimed at the premium and premium mainstream markets. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video and the other two that I've also released today. If you haven't seen them, do go and check them out. One about the Snapdragon 865 and one about how all Snapdragon 865 devices are 5G devices. Okay, go and watch those videos. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.